So an NBA friend of mine uh, told me several times during the Magic's long decades, decade-long rebuild, some nights you're the windshield and some nights you're the bug. Monday night, the Magic were the bug. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about it. Let's get to it. It's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is January 10th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. I'm the, ho- I'm the site expert and editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic gets squished pretty bad. Uh, I'm glad I could let you live in the fantasy land that was Saturday's win over the Golden State Warriors for just a little bit longer. Uh, but now we got to get back to reality as the Orlando Magic struggled to find themselves and find their identity. Now that we're at the midpoint of the season, we're going to talk a little bit about what that identity is and, and how the Magic didn't play that way uh, in Monday's loss. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you listening to Lockdown Magic uh, as Locked On Magic. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA to search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. There is not a lot to say about a 136 to 111 loss to the Sacramento Kings. Um, there is, you know, I, I, I know I've been through a lot of 30 point losses here on the show. I will say what I always say after those 30 point losses. A loss like that says more about the losing team than it does about the winning team. And that is not to take credit away from the Sacramento Kings. If the Magic had played better, if the Magic were more dialed in, were more focused, did the things that they needed to do, Sacramento was probably still going to win this game. That was a very determined Sacramento team who was has been frustrated by poor defense. They are not a good defensive team. And Orlando played a bad game and st- still scored 111 points. So I've seen some people be like, oh, the Magic only scored 111 that's really good for this team. Um, and and there were some numbers, and the box score looked a lot more cosmetic because the fourth quarter didn't really matter. Um, you know, there, there were things that looked better than they might appear. Um, so we'll go through the box score. I'll point out some of those numbers that I think are a little bit inflated and, 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 and all that. But um, I, I think, honestly, like my honest assessment of the game, even if the Magic played well, the Kings were probably going to win. They were really dialed in. They were really focused. They were hitting some tough shots. Um, there were there were a lot of contested threes that the Kings made. And, and honestly, the margin of defeat was built off of the Kings playing really, really well. The Magic missing some good looks, especially early on, that kind of killed their confidence a little bit. Um, and then just the Magic compounding and, 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 and growing those mistakes by making some really careless plays and careless turnovers, in addition to just really poor defense and defensive rotations. Um, This is the worst version of this team. Um, We know that this is not who this team is and who this team can be. And I think that's kind of the big thing is, look, every every team in the NBA is going to have a really bad night. It it happens to everyone. and, And yeah, it usually happens on these long road trips. Um, you know, the, the Magic are getting ready to play the Portland Trailblazers. Portland Trailblazers had a lot of these bad nights on a really bad road trip. Um, they should be, like Sacramento, they're going to be pretty fired up uh, to play this game uh, tonight. The Magic, I believe, still have not yet won the second night of a back-to-back yet. I believe they're the only team in the NBA to do that. The Magic should have plenty of fire in them, too, to play well. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, that first game after a road trip is always really tricky. I don't know how it is for the teams out west, but the teams go... Teams going back east, um, that first game back after a road trip is always, always, always tricky. So we'll have an interesting, I think we will have a really intriguing, interesting, competitive game tonight against Portland, but that's really on the magic to play the way that they they know they're capable of playing. Um, You know, I praise their defense Saturday. I thought Saturday was some of the best defense they played. None of that was present in Monday's loss. And so before we get into things about identity and things about 
how this team needs to play to win and what this team needs to do to win, we have to start with you got to play with the right attention to detail. And and look, that's that's the inexcusable thing about Monday's loss. I can deal with losing by 25 points. If you play hard, the shots don't fall, their shots go in. This is the NBA. You're going to get run out of the gym occasionally. That's fine. That's that's uh, like making or missing shots. If the Magic lose because the Kings made 23 threes and they were contested and they were like really hard-earned three-pointers, so be it. Whatever. The, the ma- this Magic team is just going to get beat by teams like that. And and some nights that's going to happen. Orlando's had nights where they did that to other teams already this season. They crushed Phoenix. They crushed Charlotte. They are capable of having nights like Sacramento had just as easily. Uh, but to do that, they got to play their way, their style. And to me, that's what's most disappointing about Monday night's loss. It's not the deficit. It's not the loss. It's the process. And, 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 and look... You guys hear me say this all the time. I've had some people say, well, yeah, Orlando beat Golden State without Clay, Steph, and, and you know, Andrew Wiggins was just coming back. And it's just like, sure, that's true. And 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 that may that may cheapen a win. I don't I don't know what I don't know what that means, wins or wins. But what that game was was a process game. It showed us how this team can play, how this team can stay focused, how this team can take punches, can punch back, can maintain control over the game. The big thing that I want to talk about, we'll get to this in the second segment, is, is, is about pace and identity. The Sacramento Kings want to get up and down the court. They want to just go balls to the wall, like scoring. They, they, they try to outscore you. They're, they're not pretending they play a great defense. They want to play better defense because they need it to, so they don't have to score 140 points every night. But they want to outscore teams. That is their strategy. That is their identity. And how successful that will be. We'll find out. I I think they're going to make the playoffs, or they'll at least they'll make the play and they'll make the postseason. They're going to find out very very quickly that that strategy isn't going to work. It might work fine in the regular season when you catch a team on a bad night, you know, or line on a long, uh, you know, still on a road trip. You know, it, it, you're going to catch teams for sure uh, on the odd night, but we'll, we'll see how much that we'll see how much whether they can they can sustain that, and, and of course they're challenged too because they do have the ability to score 130 points every night. But that's not who this Magic team is. That's not who this Magic team wants to be. And, and to me, that's the disappointing part. Um, you could, I, I tweeted this early in the game um, while, while I was keeping an, eye, keeping an eye on it while I was at work. Um, it was, I, I, you know, I was saying, like, look, the Magic are getting some good looks. Sacramento's getting some good looks. All the Magic have to do is play a little bit of defense because the Magic are going to get the looks that they want. They just got to be patient and play their way. And... and and that's not. And, and one thing they could not do was get sucked into the pace. It was just get sucked into trying to outscore Sacramento. That's not who this Magic team is. And so when you look at the box score and you see that Orlando took 43 threes, the most three pointers the team has taken in a game this season, it's clear why they lost. In fact, among, I think among the Magic's top five games of three point attempts, they've only won one, and that was the Houston game when they rallied at the end of the game, rallied in the fourth quarter to win that game, and that's honestly when they stopped shooting threes. Look, this team wants to shoot threes. I'm fine with them being confident shooting threes, but the type of three-pointers the Magic were getting are not the three-pointers that are going to help them win. And when you miss threes, you get long rebounds, you get fast break opportunities, you get transition opportunities, you get your defense disorganized. This team is not that three-point shooting team. This team is very, very different. And a, and a very different kind of team. And that is, again, what was frustrating about this game. It wasn't the deficit. It wasn't the loss. It wasn't Sacramento setting a franchise record with three-pointers. It's the process. It's how the team plays and what the team's trying to do. The Magic, yeah, missed some shots around the rim. And and, and look, you're going to have nights like that. And this team's young. And and I think this, I think they got sped up. They were never in control of the pace. And, and the only guy who played well was Markel Fultz, who is always in control. He just couldn't get his teammates kind of on the same pace that he was. Markel Fultz is comfortable playing at a fast pace. He will go all night long if you want him to. But that's not who this team is. That's not how this team plays. And so... The lesson from this loss to the Kings, it, 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 yeah, it's about playing better defense and being more attention, more attentive to detail and and, and and all that. But it's more about it's more about pace and playing the way the Magic need to play. We are now at the halfway point of the season. We will do a lot more 
midpoint of the season stuff coming up over the next few days. Obviously, we have a game tonight against Portland. We'll, we'll hit that tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. We will talk about midpoint of the season stuff um, and kind of assess where the team is at overall. But at the midpoint of the season, we can say a few things about who this team wants to be and how this team plays. And so we're going to chat about that and why the Magic did none of it, or very little of it at least, in this loss to the Sacramento Kings. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who'll do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and file for you so you can do, you can do not taxes. Show your, show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset. With TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish, ensuring your taxes are done right, guaranteed, so you can relax. It feels good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Intuit TurboTax, full service products only. Video meeting while expert does your taxes required. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. So we're, we're at the midpoint of the season. Let, let, you know, just no getting around that. The Magic are 15 and, 15 and 26, I believe. Um, that, that, that math checks out. Um, 15 and 26 midpoint of the season. We're on pace for a 30-win team. And, and the second half of the season is going to be a little bit tricky, trickier too. But, um, you know, I, I think we can already say that this, this season's been pretty successful. And, and, and there's a lot to be very, very happy and thrilled about when it comes to the way the Magic are playing. But obviously, and you've heard me say this a million times, I'm sure, this season is not about this season. This season is not about what the final record is and, and, and how and, and, and necessarily about wins and losses. Like wins are a byproduct of the team doing the things that the team needs to do. Learning how to win is important. We're playing meaningful games in January. We were not saying that last year. Um, the Magic are clearly above the tanking group, but still at the tail end of the group trying to make the play in. It's going to take another really good stretch, another, another honestly, another eight of nine stretch to really get this team back into contention. And look, I, I'll say this, we are going in, you know, we I don't think we could say this last year, we are going into almost every game at this point believing that we can win, believing that this team has the capability to win. And that only makes nights like Monday night more disappointing. Because we know what this team is capable of. We know what this team is can do. And now it's just about doing it every night, building that consistency. And again, that was always going to be the challenge this year. Um, you know, I see, uh, I've seen a fair amount of people, um, you know, after a 25-point loss, everything feels really, really bad. Um, you know, you see people come out of the woodworks and, and panic after one loss. And I would say, look, it's one loss. It's a bad loss. Don't make it a bad second loss. You know, the Magic don't necessarily have to win Tuesday night. I, I'd, I'd be nice if they did. I, I'd like to see them win. But they have to play better. And they have to do the things they know they have to do. And again, the disappointing part about Monday's loss was not that they lost. It's how they lost. It's how they settled for three-pointers. It's how they didn't attack the paint. How they didn't get to the foul line. How they didn't play with attention to detail. You know, I've talked about this on the show too. Urgency attention to detail, intensity, you know, just, just things that, that this team has to have to overcome both their youth and, and a little bit of their talent deficit. They, they need to play well. They need to make shots. Again, you could lose. You, you could, it's fine losing if you're missing shots. It's not fine losing if you're playing the way the Magic played on Monday night. That's the, that's the truth of it here, um, is Monday night's game was just unacceptable uh, at all levels. Um, you know, again, baseline, defensive effort was poor. The team was not rotating well. They were not doing a good job getting in front of their man, staying in front of their man. Uh, Wendell Carter's early foul trouble hurt, but he got into foul trouble because the Magic were not playing well defensively. They were not closing down the paint. They were allowing kickouts. They were not contesting threes well. The, the rotations were off. Uh, just uh, everything that went right Saturday night in San Francisco went wrong Monday night in Sacramento. And, and again, it's hard to say exactly why or, or, or what, what the reason was. Um, team just has to be dialed in and more focused. And as, as everyone says, they got to they gotta be more attentive to the game plan. When they lose, everyone says, we got to be locked in on the game plan. 
Um, this is not a team that can out-talent anybody. They have talent, but they can't out-talent anybody, especially a team that's playing as well as, or as, as good as Sacramento is. Um, and they might be able to get away with that with like a, you know, no offense to these teams, like a San Antonio with Charlotte. They certainly did against San Antonio earlier, earlier in the season. Um, but they've got to be locked in defensively. And, and they, they just weren't there. You could tell they were a step late on everything. They just weren't locked in. Then you add in lazy turnovers, settling for threes. It, it, that's, that's the formula for a bad game. So then what is the formula for a good Magic game? Again, we're halfway through the season. We can get a sense of what the Magic do when they are doing well. The first thing is they've got to attack the paint. You know, you talk, you know, th- this team is about pace. They want to play fast, but they don't want to play a ton of possessions. This is not a high possession team. They want to play fast. They want to play with force. And, and to me, this is the thing that, that no number is going to be able to measure, but you can see hits of everywhere. This Magic team is most successful when they play as the aggressors. You think back to Monday's game, Sacramento controlled the pace. It was played at the pace that Sacramento wants them. And they're fine with Orlando taking a bunch of threes. Don't They're fine with Orlando running up and down the court. That's how they want to play. That's not how the Magic play. The Magic play, they attack and transition when they can, when they can get turnovers. But they play a very kind of, meth- uh, not methodical, but they play a very patient style on offense. And the Magic need to get back. Again, the Magic didn't do that. They were rushed. They were hurried. Um, and you could see with how they were missing shots at the rim and how they were settling for threes. They felt like they needed to go fast instead of playing their game. This team, this team's identity is a rim pressure team. Um, they need, to, when they are successful, they're playing with force. They're, play, they're playing as the aggressors because they are getting downhill into the paint. Yeah, Orlando, I think, is 16th or 17th in the league in points in the paint per game at 48 points in the paint per game. Points per game. Um, but their most success is when they are living in the paint, when they're taking a lot of shots in the paint. I believe in wins, they're like first or second among te- among te- uh, uh, among winning teams in points in the paint per game. They're up around like 50, they're up around 60, uh, or mid-50s at least, uh, when they win. In this game, they got outscored 46 to 42 in the paint. One thing that cannot happen for this team, for the most part, is they cannot get outscored in the paint because they don't have the three-point shooting to make up for. The Magic have played a lot of games this year where teams outshot them from deep, even doubled them up on three-pointers, but they were able to survive because they get into the paint, they get to the foul line. And that was the other thing. Orlando had only 20 free-throw attempts in this game. They had 14 through three quarters. Like, let's throw out the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter doesn't matter. Orlando was outscored, I think, 42-34 uh, in the paint through through three quarters. They had only 14 free throw attempts through three quarters. Their free throw rate was at like 22%. This team's at 28-29% free throw rate. Uh, I think their free throw rate through three quarters is actually closer to 20%. Um, they, they have to live at the line. And so you're looking for the signs of what the Magic need to do. They need to be assertive. They need to get downhill. They need to get in the paint. Everything builds off those paint touches. Everything builds off of Paolo Bancaro ducking his shoulder in, getting to the line, getting to the paint. Franz Wagner getting in the paint. Markel Fultz getting in the paint. Wendell Carter touching the ball at the elbow and, and, and putting pressure on that paint defense. Everything about this Magic team is about, even on defense, is about the paint. Defend the paint, score in the paint, attack the paint. That's this team's identity. That's who this team needs to be. And that always that hasn't always been easy for this group. Um, because, A, they have a bunch of rookies, they have a bunch of young guys. They have a bunch of scorers who are not necessarily passers quite yet. Um, who are learning the right time to score, the right time to pass. But all the good things that happen, happen when the Magic are aggressive going to the basket. Yeah, you might give up a few fast breaks. That's kind of what you do if, if you miss those shots, if you're not rotated properly um, behind them. But... That's why this team's pace is so methodical. It's about getting to the paint, getting to the the, the rim. And to me, this is all just a sign of the team's overall aggression, confidence. When the team is aggressive and confident, they are doing these things, and that's how they get their open shots, and that's how they get those knockdown threes that this team is capable of making. When they are not, they're hanging around the perimeter, they're settling for jumpers, they're settling for three-pointers, they're not doing, they're, they're, they're playing responsive and either trying to catch up or unable to kind of impose their will. 
this team has an identity, and, and, and it really does feel like this team has something that they, they, really, they really do well. Um, they're fifth in the league in free throw rate, which is insane, and and that's just a sign of how well this, how good this team is, at getting to the line, putting pressure on defenses, and forcing mistakes. Now, free throw rate alone is not enough. It's it's a factor. It's a big thing. It's a big plus. It makes up for a lot of offensive shortcomings for this team, but it cannot be this team's identity alone. They've got to do a better job getting shots in the paint and getting kickout threes. That's not what happened Monday. Monday was the worst example of this team and the worst example of how this team plays when they're playing poorly. And yeah, the Magic played really poorly in this one. Really, really poorly. And they didn't play Magic basketball, to be perfectly frank. They didn't do the things they needed to do. Now, again, credit to Sacramento. Their defense was good. They played to their identity. They hit a ton of shots. They made tough shots. They dispirited the Magic. The Magic missed some open threes that probably would have given them some confidence early. That stuff happens. And the Magic are still, I think, very much, they need, they need early success, um, I think, to, be, to, to, to really get locked in. And, 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 and they didn't really have that. You know, Saturday night, they gave up a ton of threes early, but they were making threes back. They were able to keep pace. This night, the Magic weren't able to keep pace, and, and then they weren't able to find it because the other team had the confidence to kind of blow by them. It's one game, throw it in the trash. We know we know what this team needs to do to succeed. Now the question is, will they do it? Luckily, you get another opportunity Tuesday night in Portland. We're going to go over the box score, talk about some individual performances. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a, a quick word from our pals at Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. My goal is certainly to eat a little healthier this year, trying to snack a little less. Um, but if I do need a snack and, and you're like me wanting to eat healthier, don't compromise on taste. Get a Built Bar um, because these these protein bars are really good. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious you won't think they're good for you. They're perfect for that New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 1% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. They come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm really not sure how Built does it because I did not pay attention in science class, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is they are healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now, you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built bars at Built.com, which you can still do, of course. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up to a you can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs. Or if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. Check it out today. Built Bar. Check them out again at Built.com. All right, like I said, not a lot to say about this game. The Magic just got housed and worked and, 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 and you know, outplayed. Um, there's just, there are a lot of like moments where this team was really lazy. Um, some lazy passes leading to easy baskets, just lazy rotations. And, uh, you know, this is, this is not the effort we expect from the Orlando Magic. And, and again, I would say the outcome is not what's unacceptable. It's, it's the process. It's the way that they played that is unacceptable. This team can and should be a whole lot better. Um, a lot of the stats are going to look good cosmetically um, because of uh, because of the fourth quarter. The you know the Magic end up losing the fourth quarter, still twenty nine twenty seven. Um, but you know again, just the fourth quarter didn't matter. Um, so a lot of these stats will look better cosmetically. Orlando ends up shooting forty five point six percent and fourteen for forty four from beyond the arc. Fourteen threes is fine for the Magic, um, but the problem is they usually take around thirty. Um, fourteen for thirty would be a really good shooting night for this team. Um, but 44 three-pointers, just way too many, just settling for three-pointers again. That is the most three-pointers a team has taken all year. And you consider Sacramento took 46 three-pointers and made 23. Uh, again, that makes it a direct comparison. That means you are losing 27 points off the three-point line. That's the game. 25-point game, the Magic lost 27 points there. If Orlando takes fewer threes, get to the foul line, you know, the, the way the Magic have made up these differences when they do give up big shooting games and big offensive games, the way the Magic make up these differences is by scoring in the paint. Again, they only had 42 points in the paint. Uh, and by getting to the foul line. They only had 20 free throws. I mean, 15 of 20 free throws. Um, that is 
that is how this team builds itself, and that's uh, that's how this team um, that's how this team takes that extra step and 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 kind of makes up for their lack of three point shooting. So yeah, yeah, the Magic need to add three point shooting just so they can make it a little bit easier on themselves, give themselves a little bit of margin for error. But Orlando's you know not given up twenty three threes before, but they've played games where they dealt with this kind of discrepancy, uh, and they. They they know how to play against it and 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 again they just didn't do the things they they need to do to win. Instead they got sucked into Sacramento's game. They ended up taking up taking a lot of threes that they didn't need to take, um, settling for jumpers, settling for the perimeter instead of getting in the paint. That's why they lost this game. That's that that's a big reason why they lost this game. Um, honestly, the really two guys are worth mentioning as positive players in this game. Markel Fultz, sixteen points, eight for ten shooting, five assists. Uh, Markel was playing with force and, t- and intensity throughout the game. When the ball was in his hands, good things were happening. He made a mistake. He gets back and blocks the shot. Um, you know, had a great block late in, uh, or late, uh, in the second half of this game. Um, he he was the one making plays, getting his feet in the paint, getting open shots for for teammates. He he played really really well. Um, and, and honestly, to me, he was the only player that played very very well in this game. That did a lot of things. Um, that the team need to do. If, if the team had Markel Fultz's energy in this game, it, it would have been a much more competitive game. I'm not going to sit here and say the Magic would have won because Sacramento was really on it to, on it in this one, but the game would have been much more competitive um, if, if the team played with Markel Fultz's intensity. Uh, Wendell Carter also, I thought, had a nice game. 15 points, 6 for 12 shooting, 2 for 4 from 3, 7 rebounds, 3 blocks. Um, what, look, Wendell's early foul trouble really hurt this team because you know because Mo Wagner looked a step off um, you know, Mo Bamba just got bullied by Demontis Sabonis. Wendell Carter was really the only one that that could that could give that team the paint presence they needed. And and his early exit from this game in the first half and, and certainly in the second quarter really hurt this team. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Orlando needs another kind of stout defensive center, probably. Uh, you know, and Mo Wagner has been doing it pretty well throughout the course of the season. Um, you know, again, this this, this game this game excluded, but uh, Dell played really really well. I would say he settled for threes. I don't want him shooting four three pointers, even if they're open. There were a few threes, honestly, that he should have taken that he didn't. Um, so he's hesitating and thinking about a three point shot. When that's happening, you don't need to pop the three point line. Pop to an area where you're comfortable. Take a shot that you're comfortable with. Build some confidence that way. Um, so you know, again, if you're going to shoot a lot of threes, you got to shoot them confidently. And and I, I just I never felt like Wendell was necessarily shooting or looking for shots confidently. Uh, in this one, and again, that's that's something that permeated the team. Paolo Bancaro ended up getting close to his number, 17 points, 5 for 11 shooting, 2 for 7 from 3, 5 for 8 from the foul line, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals, only 1 turnover. So some good signs from the rookie. I think he did well handling some of the double teams that got sent his way, but Sacramento did a good job keeping it out of the paint. Yeah, he got his 8 free throw attempts. That's 7 three-pointers. That's too much for Paolo right now. He's, he's not quite a knockdown three-point shooter. Look, he was hitting his step back. He was feeling his jumper a little bit. That was still a little bit much. Again, this team goes how, how, how Paolo goes. Paolo and Franz are the team stars. They're going to go as they go. As good as Marco Fultz is, this team's going to follow the energy of their leading players. And that's a responsibility that Paolo and Fran, Franz have to learn and understand. Franz, a solid but not spectacular game, 16.7 for 12 shooting, 2 for 5 from deep. It's not bad. You know, again, fi- you know, people are saying like he should have gotten more shots, and yeah, he probably should have, but... You know, Cole Anthony led the team with 13 field goal attempts. We'll get to him. Um, led the team with 13 field goal attempts. It's not like Franz isn't getting his shots. And, and again, just getting to the basket. Didn't get to the foul line, which is really surprising. Um, he, he missed some shots. He wasn't playing well either. And again, it's hard for the Magic to win when Paolo's settling for jumpers and Franz is missing shots. Franz missed some, some bunnies in this one. Missed some key shots and get to the foul line. It's hard for this team to win when both those players are, are not playing well uh, and not playing with aggression and force. That was the case in this one. Both those guys, they're they're the energy of this team. They are the leaders of this team. They may not be ready for it. They may be too young for it. But that's the fact of the matter. Those two guys are the energy of this team. Markel Fultz controls the pace, gets them, gets them, gets them in the right spots, gets them going. Wendell Carter is the defensive base. This team goes as Paolo and Franz go. That's that's the fact of the matter. And that's asking a lot of two young players. And look, they're gonna go through these ups and downs. They're gonna have games like like this night where they don't realize or understand that they set the tone for this team, the sooner they understand that, A, the quicker the Magic are going to start winning again, and B, B the, the more we're going to understand who this team is. Um, 
Let's get to the bench then. I've talked talked about the starters. Uh, the bench really struggled. Um, you know, look, Jail, it was Jalen Suggs, 14 points, 4 for 10, shooting 2 for 7 from deep. Settled for a 3 too much, as he tends to do. Um, so take fewer three-pointers, Jalen. But uh, uh, for him, just getting him back on the court, this was his most extended time. He played 24 minutes, um, 14 points. He was able to make things happen. Four assists. You know, he still had two turnovers, but generally able to make things happen. Uh, just getting him back in the flow of things is good. If you're going to have a blowout, at least give a player like Jalen Suggs a chance to kind of get out there and play. He did that. I, I suspect he'll be better. Just, just take fewer threes. Um, Cole Anthony really struggled, and, and his up-and-down play has been probably the biggest concern for the team of late. Eight points, three for 13 shooting, missed all five three-pointers, two for two from the foul line, seven rebounds, um, but overall a minus 34 on the plus-minus scale. Um, look, those bench units really struggled. Um, Cole, in, in game, games like this are where Cole's really going to struggle too. When the team is settling for jumpers, when they're not moving the ball, that's when you get a lot of these games where Cole Anthony takes too many shots and, and, and isn't getting the standstill shots that he's good at. Now, he missed a few of them. It's not like all of his shots were bad shots. You know, he obviously missed, missed some. But because the team's not attacking, you end up playing like the Magic did last year where there's a lot of perimeter dribbling around and not a lot going toward the basket. And, and that's, again, what the Magic need to do. They need to get to the basket. They need to get to the paint. Um, and again, that's that's where Orlando really struggled. Look, there, there are good numbers here. Um, the Magic played poorly, still shot 45.6%. They still scored 101 points. I think their offensive rating was like 102, though, so don't, don't read too much into that. 13 turnovers isn't bad. They gave up 19 points off those 13 turnovers. Again, in a game like this, that really matters. Um, they still scored 42 points in the paint. They were 21 for 33 in the paint. Not, not good, but not bad. You can survive that if you're able to get more shots, more attempts in the paint, more, more points in the paint. Um, they only, you know, they only give up 13 fast break points, five for 10 on fast breaks. So they're not doing terrible there, but again, the defense just wasn't good. They gave up 41 points in the first quarter. Sacramento scores 30 in every quarter, but the fourth and they got 29 in the fourth. That's, they're not going to win that way. They shoot 53.6% from the floor, 50% overall, 23 of their 52 field goal makes were threes, 46 of their 97 attempts were threes. They were taking a lot of threes, making a lot of threes. Harrison Barnes, six three-pointers for 30 points. Keegan Murray, five three-pointers for 15 points. Kevin Herter, four three-pointers for 14 points. Trey Lyles, three three-pointers for 14 points. It was a balanced scoring effort from Sacramento. They were able to get the ball moving around the perimeter, just twisting the Magic. The Magic's rotations were terrible. The efforts on closeouts were terrible. They lost track of shooters. They just they just were not dialed in. And again, that's, that's the disappointing part of this game, not even necessarily the result. The Orlando Magic fall to the Sacramento Kings 136 to 111. The good news is, right back on the horse. They got to play again tonight against the Portland Trailblazers. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast at Apple on Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them links to the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out Orlando Magic Daily. Of course, follow me on Twitter there at O. Magic Daily. Now that you're done listening to us, go make your next listen the Game to Game NBA podcast. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.